Good morning and welcome to everyone. Reverend Phil is taking a well-earned break from the parish this week, so I'm going to share with you a few of my thoughts in his absence today. Let's begin together with the collect. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Last Saturday I went to a wedding. It was the wedding of the daughter of our dearest friends. Her mum Joy and I are as close as sisters can be without being genetically related and so I suppose that makes Lydia more like an honorary niece. As families, we have holidayed together and there's something special about the wedding of someone you've watched grow up from a tiny baby to the young person they've become. It had been quite a different wedding to the one that had been planned, but only in relation to the reception. It had been a very stressful time for the bride and groom, first on, then off, then on again and then finally off. However, the wedding ceremony had never been in doubt. There were two young people that wanted to declare their love in marriage before God. And last Saturday was so special in that many people who knew them gathered outside the church, socially distanced of course, to witness their going into church separately, but coming out, joined together in love of one another and in love of God. The whole atmosphere that day was one of love and joy and as each of us went our separate ways, love went with us too. You can certainly say we had been patient in waiting for that day. And so this got me thinking about this thing called love. Now I'm sure there's a cue for a song there for those old of us to remember that song. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is a very famous passage that talks about this gift of love and I'm just going to read a few verses from that chapter. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have all faith as so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice in wrongdoings but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. In our everyday life, I think love is a word that is often reduced to what money can buy or what we like the most. I often say, I love Harry Bowes. But here we are in this passage, given a clear indication of what love really is, what it should look like in our Christian lives that says everything about who and what we really are. And you know, it's no mean task. Each week in our services, we are reminded of the two great commandments, to love God with every fibre of our being and to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. Two massive commands. And Jesus didn't mince his words when he said, love one another as I have loved you. And what does that really mean? Well, we're told love is patient and kind. Love is easily seen in the big things that we do, but patience and kindness are often overlooked. We don't stand there and say, look, I'm being really patient with you because I love you. In the short time that I've been with you, I've been overwhelmed by everyone's patience and kindness in the questions that, that I keep asking as I get to know you. 
the little kindnesses we show to each other often have the biggest impact on people and that has certainly been true to me. I can think of a story I heard once of a lady bus driver who got to know the regulars on her bus route. The passengers were surprised when she started to say good morning to them or see you tomorrow. And then she started to get out of her cab and help them off with their bags when she could see them struggling. As the passengers got off the bus, she would say cheery bye, but also called after them, I love you. Soon they started letting buses go past so that they could get on hers and they found out that she liked coloured scarves. And then her cab was soon full of them. It was their way of showing them that they loved her. Love is so powerful, isn't it? Alongside those small acts of kindness and patience, which cost her absolutely nothing, those three little words, I love you, made a huge impact. It's an old saying that actions speak louder than words, and I believe that love is never invisible in its outworking. Love will be the gospel to someone that you meet in the doctor's waiting room, or at the coffee shop, in the checkout queue at Sainsbury's, or maybe even on the bus. Love in action is very powerful. When we weep together, or laugh together, this is love. When we journey together, and then walk the extra mile, this is love. But this love business can be tough. Our neighbour may not necessarily be easy to be patient or kind to. I work in a school and I have to be honest, when there has been a parent who has been a bit rude to me, I generally don't want to shout after them, I love you. Although I might try it one day and see what reaction I get. Humility is the key. First, we have to love ourselves not in an arrogant or proud way, but in honesty, allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and compassionate and humble in our giving and receiving. We are just following Jesus' command, love one another, but there is graciousness and humility in being loved too. It's a two-way street, this love thing. When God so loved the world that he gave his only son, we entered into relationship with the one who has loved and still loves us more than we can ever imagine. A love that starts with a baby and journeys to the cross. It is a love that compels and love never ends. This thing called love is not an easy road to travel. It takes kindness, it takes patience, hope, and endurance and we only do it in the strength of Jesus who chose us and now faith hope and love abide these three and the greatest of these is love thanks be to God
to be my servants too. Let's pray together. The night has passed. The day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father God, this is the world that you love. We bring before you our world, our nation, our community, and ask that love will be at its heart. For leaders to lead with integrity, with patience and kindness. May they always seek the common good, so that all creation know their value to themselves, to each other and to you. We bring to you our homes, our families, ourselves, and ask that love will be at the heart of all of our relationships. Teach us, dear Lord, to love with patience and kindness in the good times and the hard times. May we love each other as you love us. We remember those who we know who are ill, those receiving treatment or waiting for results from tests. We remember those who feel unloved. Lord, we ask that you show us how to stretch out the hand of patience and kindness and to love them as you do. Lord, we pray that we will truly live your commandments and to love as you have loved us with all of our being. As we rejoice in the light of this new day, may the light of your presence set our hearts on fire with love for you. Amen. And so let's pray in the words that our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so I pray for you a happy and loved day. <laughs>